Hello, everyone. It is Mark Berman from TV Media Insights. It is Friday, May 16th, and I would like to welcome you back to our daily video cast. The good news from the get go is I survived the network upfront presentation week. I attended the presentations. I have the scoop for you on all the new series. And I also do want to talk about the CW, which presented yesterday morning. Now, here is the bottom line. You know, once upon a time, you would go to these presentations and the broadcast networks would talk about what's coming up in the fall and in midseason. Summer was never an option because the networks have never really programmed in the summer after Memorial Day weekend. They've always put up the gone fishing sign. Well, that has changed. The broadcast networks are more aggressive than ever before. And they do not necessarily want to use the word midseason anymore. So ultimately, what you hear from the broadcasters is a 12-month schedule. But I do want to focus on what is coming up in the fall. And I want you to keep in mind that in the middle of the season, I won't say midseason, but I will say later in the season, you will see at least another 25 new series. But what is happening this fall is you will have 24 new shows. You are going to have 13 new dramas, 11 new comedies, and one reality series. Series. That reality show is called Utopia. It airs twice per week on Fox, and it is a very, very big gamble. Just as a comparison, last fall we had 26 new series. In fall 2000. Uh, 11, it was 21, and in fall 2010, it was 27, so we'll have 21 new shows next season. ABC and NBC have the most number of new shows. They have six each. CBS and Fox have five each, and the CW has only two, and again, this is in the fall. You will be seeing a lot more later in the season. In terms of the breakdown by night, Monday will feature four new series. Tuesday has seven, Wednesday has four, Thursday has five, Friday has two, and Sunday has two. Of course, the broadcasters do not program Saturday anymore, so I don't even include it in any conversations. If you visit our website today or check out today's newsletter, you will have all these stats available that you can look at. The bottom line is the networks are being aggressive. There is a focus, particularly in the drama department, on comic book superheroes and fantasy. There is a typical array of comedies. And again, the big risk is Utopia on Fox simply because it is airing two times per week. If it fails on the first night, it is on in trouble the second. Now heading over to the CW, the network, remember, only has five nights of the week, which is 10 hours in total. Total. You are only seeing two new shows on the schedule. You will have two more later in the season. So you could say from the get-go that it is a modest lineup. However, it is a lineup that does have some solid compatibility. Starting with Monday, the network is moving the originals into the Monday 8 o'clock hour. This automatically will be an improvement for the CW because the bar of comparison is so low. And it's leading into the first comedy that the CW has ever had on a fall schedule. It's an hour called Jane the Virgin. I actually thought the clips looked funny, but look, it's not going to work. That joke about a girl who was a virgin getting accidentally inseminated is going to wear thin very quickly. It's a tough hour, and it's not going to be able to compete. Now, Tuesday, the good news on the CW is it is opening up with the Flash which is a spinoff from Arrow. I imagine what Arrow is doing on Wednesday, which is positive for the CW, Flash will do on Tuesday, and that is leading into the 10th season of Supernatural, so that's compatible. Wednesday is staying the same with Arrow leading into the 100. Thursday is the same with the Vampire Diaries leading into Rain, and Friday is weak. Now, the good news, or positive news to some degree is whose line is it anyway is to revival of the classic series it's airing two episodes per week an original and a repeat on friday it doesn't do gangbusters but it's doing better than anything the cw has ever aired there and that is leading into the return of america's next top model which took a season off at this point this show should have ended three years ago the cw is milking it for the last viewer and it is just not going to resonate on friday so overall i would say the cw schedule is respectable it's modest it has compatibility there are some weaknesses there are some positives it's better than i have seen before so the cw is heading in the right direction. So good for them. Overall, I'm going to give you a grade for each of the five broadcast networks, in my humble opinion, in terms of what their fall lineups look like. I am giving CBS, the most watched network, a C plus. I normally give it an A or an A minus. I think it could have done better. Maybe a C plus or a B minus. I'm giving NBC a B. I'm giving ABC 
A, B minus. I'm giving Fox a D, and the CW gets a C plus slash B minus. I have more for you on these schedules as the weeks progress. Keep in mind that what you have heard is not necessarily etched in stone. They always tend to make changes. And before I depart, I do want to mention today is the final day of Barbara Walters as a co-host on The View. She will remain on the daytime talker as a producer, but she is leaving off of she's heading off air because she is retiring. And yesterday featured all the co-hosts on The View over the course of the show. It was a very crowded table, but it was actually worth watching. I'm not necessarily a fan of the show, but you have to give it credit. It has certainly generated a lot of interest and controversy over the years. Good luck to Barbara Walters, who will be featured in a two-hour special tonight on ABC. And that is our daily video cast on this 16th day of May. I thank you for joining me. I hope you have a great weekend. And I will see you back on Monday. Take care.